Once the analysis has been performed, we see that two new tabs appeared in the bar. One is the results tab and the other one refers to the resistance domains. In this phase, some properties of the model have been locked until the user will not cancel the analysis. Some other, like the frame properties, can still be modified, but any change made to them will highlight the rerun analysis and rerun verifications button. This to notify that the results are not anymore coherent with the input data. The analysis group allows to select the analysis for which we want to visualize the results. In this case we are examining the model analysis and in the group modes of vibration we activated the visualization of the model deformed shape. In the same group we have information about all the calculated modes. Let's double click in the viewport in order to visualize multiple views. In this way we can better understand that this mode is a mode in the y direction. In fact its participating mass in that direction is the 99%. And its vibration period t is 0.121 seconds. Now let's pass to the next mode, which is the fundamental mode in the x direction with a period of 0.106 seconds. And finally to the last mode, which is a twisting one, with very few participating mass along x and y. We can directly access the fundamental mode in x and y direction by pressing on the relevant button. Now let's maximize one of the viewports and let's activate the visualization of the nodal masses. The masses are represented as spheres with a size proportional to their values. In this case we are looking at the generated masses in the x direction. We notice that all the mass is concentrated in one node, the master node for level 1. This is because level 1 has been defined as rigid and the masses of all the slave nodes have been uh, collected in the master node. Now let's pass to the visualization of the original masses and we see that each node with a mass in the x direction displays a sphere. Some masses are grey because the joint they are related to is not free to translate in the x direction. The others have a red boundary because they are masses in the x direction but the filling is yellow because they are slave nodes. Now let's examine the results of the static non-seismic analysis. The group load case allows us to visualize the results of a single action, like the permanent action, or of a load combination, in this case the ultimate limit state combination 37. The controls on the right allow us to change the current load case. The results that can be displayed for each load case are displacements, joint reactions, thrust line and diagrams. In case of load combinations, a color by verification is available. The displacements simulate the deformed shape of the structure. Their visualization can be scaled acting on the displacement scale. Now let's hide the displacements and activate the reactions. These are represented as arrows acting on each joint with the restraints translations. They can also be scaled acting on the force scale. The thrust line instead is available for arches and column discretized into drums, but is not the case of this building, while the diagrams refers to axial force, shear forces and moments. As for the load, also for the diagrams, we can display the values. To have more information about the results, we can select a frame and access the results tab. Here we have the values of the formations and forces at the start point and end point of the frame. We can choose between the total span or the span deformable in plane or out of plane. At the last group we have information about the verifications. Now let's deactivate the visualization of reactions and diagrams and visualize the verifications. We could also display the legend and notice that for in plane flexure all the verifications are fulfilled. Now let's change the type of verification. The next one is the sliding shear. Then we have diagonal shear and out of plane flexure. In all the cases the verifications are fulfilled. This behavior was expected since we are looking at the static non-seismic analysis. Let's see how the thing changes if we look at the seismic linear analysis like the model response spectrum. Here we can see that some verifications are not fulfilled. Let's activate the visualization of the safety factors and we notice that the intensity of the color depends on the value of the safety factor. 
Now let's see all the other verifications like the diagonal shear, the sliding shear and the in-plane flexure. And now we can examine the results of the nonlinear static analysis. As we see in the legend, here the colors refer to the state of the frame. It can be elastic, partially or fully plastic, collapsed or in excessive tensile or compressive stress. The panel on the right displays the capacity curve of the structure. In this case we are looking at load distribution A in the positive X direction. We can go through all the different steps of the pushover analysis with these arrows or we can right click in the point of the curve. Let's activate the visualization of the displacements and let's see how the structure changes during the pushover curve. We saw that at each step displacements, safety factor and verification change. At this particular step we also got the first plastic frame. Now let's visualize an animation of the pushover curve in order to appreciate the behavior of the structure during the analysis. We see that as the base shear increases, the frames in the X direction enter the plastic range because they developed plastic hinges at their two ends. The displacement at the same time increases in the X direction. At a certain point, when we pass to the next sub curve, some frame collapse. The analysis proceeds until a balanced con condition cannot be found anymore. Now let's do the same in the Y direction. First of all we notice that the structure is quite different between X and Y direction. In the X direction we have openings and slender piers, while in the Y direction we have quite stiff piers. So far the structure remains in the elastic range, but when the first plastic frame occurs, then the stiffness decreases and the pushover curves change its behavior. In this case we have only one sub-curve, probably because the frames in the Y direction have all the same cross-section. We know that in pushover analysis the verification is made in terms of displacements. In order to have a graphic representation, let's move to the tab Capacity Curves. In this graph we can display the multi-degree of freedom curve, the single degree of freedom which in this case is coincident with the multi-degree of freedom, and the bilinear curve, which is used for the definition of the demand. Let's activate the references in order to visualize the capacity and the demand in terms of displacements. In this case we see that the capacity is much higher than the demand, therefore the verification is fulfilled. Another representation of the same results is available in the ADRS graph. In this graph the x-axis represents spectral displacement while the y-axis represents spectral acceleration. The advantage of this representation is that we can plot together the demand spectra here in black and the capacity spectra here in blue. The capacity spectrum is obtained from the bilinear curve on the left. With the aid of this graph we can define a performance point for the structure in this case given from the intersection between the capacity spectrum and the elastic demand spectrum. Since the capacity of the structure is much higher than the demand, then the verification is fulfilled. Another interesting representation of the pushover curves is the 3D graph. Here we can see the pushover curve in 3D view and examine the deviation of the control displacement in the orthogonal plane. In this case the deviation is the 0%. Fine, here we completed this volume of the training series. Thank you for the attention and wish you good work with EDSPCM.